print email Facebook Twitter more grieving mum calls for hospital records overhaul after teen daughter's suicide media player, space to play, enter mute, left and right to seek, 00 colon 0002 colon 4100 colon 0002 colon 41 Rani was a really beautiful soul who unfortunately just got caught up in some really bad situations. Those are the words of grieving mum Kerry Stanley, and already you know how this story ends, it's a painful one. And familiar. As Rani entered her teenage years she became increasingly rebellious. She fell in with a bad crowd and then the drugs started, she would disappear for days, couch surfing and spinning stories for the parents of friends who would let her stay without so much as a phone call to Kerry to say where her little girl was. She managed to do this for about a year and a half, Kerry said. What I found most difficult at that time was, I knew she was staying at other family homes and not one parent called me. Kerry struggled to find a way to reach her daughter, who was hell-bent on keeping her mum at arm's length even as she desperately needed the support. Support to navigate school, mental health issues, a drug problem and increasingly abusive personal relationships. We gave it all we could, she just couldn't get over the line. There was no coming back for her. On February 22nd Rani was found dead in a city parking lot, she was 18. The cause, suicide. Hospitals don't talk to each other the questions around how, where and when faded into the background for Kerry and her family at first, as they set their minds to preparing a loving service. It wasn't until later that the events of Rani's final days would be revealed, and start to paint a picture of a health service struggling to cope with complex mental health problems. In fact, it was at her funeral that Kerry first started to learn the truth. This woman came up to me, I didn't know her, and she was terribly distraught and said, I was with Rani the night before, I couldn't keep her in. Kerry said, the woman was a nurse at a hospital in outer Melbourne, where Rani had been taken because of a suicide attempt only hours before her eventual death. At first Kerry was confused, at the time she didn't know Rani had even been to that hospital but over time she managed to piece together the details. On February 15th Rani was found in Melbourne CPD after a suicide attempt and taken to a city hospital, where she was admitted to a psych ward. On February 18th she discharged herself. On the 21st she was again found in an erratic and suicidal state, this time at an outer suburb, and was taken to a different hospital. Rather than be admitted, she instead chose to leave. The next morning she was dead. Kerry was distraught to learn this, and is now calling for greater integration of hospital and medical records. It is not known what, if any, records the second hospital accessed on the night before Arnie's death, but Kerry has been told they didn't have her full history. I said, to the police, why didn't they know she was taken to the psych ward only three days earlier? Why didn't they keep her in? They said, well, there's no way to know because the hospitals don't talk to each other. I was outraged at that. I thought how can this be? Something so common. Kerry said she wasn't blaming the staff on call, because they were only doing what they could with the information they had. If they had known, it could have definitely prevented it, at least for that night, she said. Change has to happen. This will be Rani's legacy. They are treating patients without all the information sharing of patient information is complex and varies between states. Victorian guidelines say that when a patient is accepted into a public mental health service they should be entered into a statewide database, which records their demographic and clinical data. If they present at another public health service, that information should be available. However, there are complications, even if that patient information is brought up. The bar for holding someone against their will on mental health grounds is high, and patients can often be assessed and allowed to leave, and it's made more complex when private hospitals are included, as they do not have access to the same statewide database. They can request discharge summaries from other hospitals, which if provided are often sent via fax. Professor Patrick McGurry is the executive director of Origin a youth mental health service, and said Kerry had identified a serious issue in the system. He said a starting point was strengthening links across the Youth Mental Health Foundation, Headspace. We need to have one medical record system across all Headspace sites and they need to be integrated with the state-funded community mental health programs, he said. There are probably other linkages between police and drug and alcohol services that also need to be built. 
What, Rani, fell into was a huge hole and there are hundreds of thousands of young people falling into that hole every day. The federal government is currently rolling out the My Health Record initiative, which it hopes will contain basic information for all Australians by the end of 2018, like allergies, ongoing medical conditions, hospital discharge summaries and pathology tests. Professor McGorry said there were privacy concerns when it came to the type of mental health records that might be included in that data, but they had to be weighed against hospitals making decisions in the dark. Some protections have to be built in, but you can see what happens if you don't actually have this communication happening, he said. Because people are making treatment decisions based on inadequate information, and they make big mistakes. These are preventable deaths. None of these people have terminal illnesses when they die. They all could be saved if they were helped in the right way and currently we're not able to help them all in the right way.